Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News, and I'm Faisal Rahman, live from our Islamabad studios. Today, we'll be talking about uh, whatever happened in USA yesterday. As we all know, uh, that uh, uh, the supporters of uh, Donald Trump stormed into the, the Capitol, and uh, what they did out there uh, was what all you witnessed on the television screens. Interestingly, four people got killed. One was shot, and uh, this is something very, very. Uh, different, I would say, which we have never witnessed before. We always used to give examples of the Western democracies and the way um, uh, they even uh, accept their uh, defeats in the elections. But this time, Trump never accepted. But now, he has officially said uh, that uh, the smooth transition uh, will take place and uh, he has accepted that Joe Biden is going to be the next 46th president. So, a couple of interesting cars I want you to uh, look uh, into. It says hundreds of Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol in a stunning bid to overturn his election defeat. Four people died during the chaos and 52 were arrested. It further says the U.S. Congress certified that Democrat Joe Biden and his running mate Kamala Harris have won the 2020 presidential election. Now that is the breaking news. It was the most damaging attack in the iconic building since the British Army burnt it in 1814. So just imagine, uh, after almost 206 years, what they witnessed was something unprecedented. It further states in a video posted on Twitter, while the writers roamed the capital, Trump repeated his false claims about the election fraud, but urged the protesters to leave. You have to go home now. We have to have peaceful and we love you, you are very special. That's what was stated by the former president of USA, Donald Trump. Facebook and Instagram have banned Trump for 24 hours. YouTube also removed the video. Snapchat stopped Trump from creating new posts, but did not say if or when it would end the ban. And increasing political polarization in the US politics and its global impact, that is going to be actually the topic of discussion in our today's uh, program. Coming to certain tweets. Now, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson tweeted saying, disgraceful scenes in the US Congress. The United States stands for democracy around the world and it is now vital that there should be peaceful and orderly transfer of power. Stated by the Prime Minister of UK, Boris Johnson. And the President of France, Mr. Macron, states that uh, we believe in democracy. Prime Minister of Sweden, Stephen Löfven, says, deeply worrying developments in Washington, D.C. This is an assault on democracy. President Trump and several members of Congress bear substantial responsibility for developments. The democratic election process must be respected. And then it says the U.S. Congress in a temple of democracy to witness tonight's scenes in Washington, D.C. is a shock. We trust uh, the U.S. to ensure a peaceful transfer of power to Mr. Joe Biden, the 46th President of the United States of America. So a lot has been happening and um, there is so much going on. I think this is something we would love to talk about in our today's program. Let me introduce you to our panelists. We have with us Dr. Manjur Afridi Saab. He's an expert on international relations and uh, foreign affairs. Afridi Saab, thank you very much sir, for your My time. Pleasure. And we have been joined in by Bariza Uma. Uh, she is a social cultural analyst based in uh, Washington. Ma'am, thank you very much for your time as well. And uh, we've also been joined in by Air Vice Marshal retired Faiz Amir Saab, senior analyst and the former. Uh, Vice Chancellor of the Air University, Islamabad. Avim Saab, pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you so much for your time as well. Thank you, Faisal. Thank you. <clears throat> now, coming to you, Afridi Saab, what all you witnessed last night, <laughs> if you just mute your TV and watch that, nobody can think that is United States of America. Four people dying, the way they stormed the building, and the people working there eventually. Forget about the security. I mean, they scaled the walls, they just went through those uh, metal barricades, and eventually they went inside and there was this uh, do or die like situation. Four people died, 52 got arrested. What were you feeling when you were watching that? 
Uh, Faisal Saab, really it was very much horrible because if we see and look into the history of United States, so never happened like this. So it is, uh, I think, for the first time that what now uh, we are looking into the polarization of American society and also the U.S. politics. And it is uh, no doubt that that is uh, because of the Donald Trump and his policies. So it is uh, just uh, a kind of continuation, uh, uh, we can say that uh, after the killing of George Floyd, uh, you know, a hip hop uh, artist uh, who was killed uh, in police custody last year in May, on 25th May. So then in June, in July, we have seen so many protests, Black some lives violent uh, protests. Mm. So after the 3rd November US presidential election, now it is a new kind of, you know, protests, waves, uh, which is still going there in the United States. So nobody can believe on it. But yes, it's happening. Uh, our eyes, you know, very much astonished uh, to see this situation. Really, it is happening in the United States of America because U.S. is considered itself, and of course, the entire world, they on the in the one way or the other, they they also label it as the champion of democracy. So, yeah. and and you know, and democracy, it is. Uh, me also as a teacher, I teach to students that democracy it believes in tolerance. So if they, you know, look into the situation, what is happening in the United States and what is what they call it as the champion of democracy, you know, so it is very much, I think, shameful. And it is, uh, uh, of course, it also uh, hit the very essence of democracy itself that is it democracy? It is liberal democracy, Western democracy, and who is doing it? If the mob that is gathered by themselves, then it's okay. But they are, uh, even the, uh, the senators, the Republicans, they say that uh, this mob was uh, formed by the Donald Trump. It was incited and ignited by the Donald Trump and also addressed by the Trump. So if it is by After a leader. After inciting them, he was telling them to be peaceful. I mean, I, I failed to understand what exactly he meant. <laughs> you know, so if uh, a United States president do in the way what is happening, so again, it's very much shameful. And, and it's not only, you know, dividing the American society, but also the entire world. Because it was the United States which was delivering lectures to the entire planet to each and every country have to perform in democracy. It was the United States. Have to States. have democracy and on top, whether it suits them or not. They were forcing democracy yes. over so many countries, yes. which and was a failed formula. They some. also claimed <laughs> democracy as a champion and as, uh, you know, a protector of the human rights. So on so many occasions in Libya and so many African countries and also in Latin American countries and Asian states, America has intervened in the name of human rights. They claimed that there was pseudo-democracy or there was dictatorship. So now what is a legitimate claim or what is, uh, you know, uh, have the United States of America exactly. in the future That's will what intervene? Witnessed. I mean, yeah. yeah, there are certain authoritarian states, I mean, they have performed so well also. So it's not a compulsion that you have to have democracy, uh, you know, uh, you know, working for you well. I mean, it's such an interesting yes. phenomenon. But sir, let me go to... Um, the lady joining us from Washington, uh, D.C., she's a socio-cultural analyst, uh, Bariza Umar. Uh, putting a question to you, ma'am, I'm, I'm sure you must have been glued to the television screen when everything was going on. People who were incited by Donald Trump, they stormed into the building and what happened later on, nobody even thought of it. Four people got killed, one was shot also. And uh, we heard the firing uh, from the staff out there and everybody <clears throat> was scared and eventually till the time they were able to escape the building and the, these hooligans, I mean these uh, pro-Trump supporters just stormed inside. And what happened was, uh, that was some sort of scene, you know, from a movie maybe. Never seemed as if you were watching live TV and that also in the United States of America. Ma'am, your take. Um, well, I, I would actually like to um say that stormed into the building i don't know it, it felt more like they were let into the building um it uh it was very strange to see um images of in one case there was a police officer posing for a selfie with one of these um 
domestic terrorists, which I think is what they, they should be called instead of being called violent Trump protesters, because you had protesters for Black Lives Matter who were, who were called rioters just because of the context of, of their protests. And if you look in comparison for the George Floyd protests, there were over 14,000 arrests, and there have been 52 arrests. Um, Donald Trump had tweeted in in the summer that there was going to be um, they were at, they had recently reinstituted the statute statutes and <clears throat> monument act for a minimum of 10 years in prison for anyone who vandalized or damaged any federal building and yet yesterday you had him asking his no not asking um, exhorting his supporters to go to the Capitol and do just this so there's uh, it was it was surreal. Um, I think for a lot of Americans, it was embarrassing. Um, they've never actually <laughs> seen this coming home this way, and they, they haven't recognized how this has been building up, not only over the past four years, but over the entirety post the Civil War, um, where you could have people could be flying the Confederate flag, and the Confederate flag never made it to the Capitol during the Civil War, and yesterday the Confederate flag made it to the Capitol. So or, that now, was Barisa, surreal. Barisa, now, uh, uh, looking at the kind of statements coming from none other, the, none other than the Republicans, uh, says that D Donald Trump should have stepped down. I mean, I was reading an article in which they mentioned about uh, Tom Cotton, uh, one of the leading um, uh, politicians from Arkansas State. He also said the same. So many others. I mean, even the Republicans were literally... Uh, you know, so offended with whatever happened, and especially the way Donald Trump incited for his own personal gains. Now, when you look at what happened, do you think the next uh, maybe two weeks or so would be really crucial till the 20th? And a lot of things can turn against uh, Donald Trump. And what about the people who, who got killed? And I mean, how would the government of USA uh, would proceed uh, in that regard, ma'am? Well, what they need to do is make arrests. I don't know if that's going to happen, um, but that, that's what needs to happen. And it needs to start with, with um, Vice President Pence. And uh, Vice President Pence, actually, there were, there were indications that he was already taking over some of the, the, um, the, the things that are, are traditionally for the office of the president only. He had to call in the National Guard, not the president. Um, so... It's unlikely that the 25th Amendment um, is going to be instituted because you, you would need more, most of his cabinet to agree to it. You, and he's been firing and replacing people in his cabinet so frequently that, that you kind of lose track of who's even there. Um, and you need two thirds of the Congress and Senate to, to be on board. So with two weeks left, it's unlikely, but um, he, he needs to be reined in because these next two weeks, he still hasn't, he may have said that he, there's going to be a peaceful transition of power, but he still has not conceded. He is still talking about this being a stolen election. So, yeah, when he says that it's a stolen election, but still he's telling his people to remain calm. I mean, it's a very contradictory statement. One is pretty negative, the other one is pretty positive, and eventually the end result would be confusion. And confusion would definitely lead to this kind of a chaos. Absolutely right. Coming to you, uh, AVM uh, Faiz Amir Saab now. If I may ask you, what is your take on the current scenario and how do you see things proceeding uh, forward now? AVM Faizami, can you hear me? So I can't hear you, maybe, maybe. I'm, okay. Can I think you hear me now? it's mute. Yeah, perfect. Can you, Go ahead, can you hear me now? Yeah, no, perfectly. I think this was a, a show of dissent which turned into disorder. Uh, the two things that went bad was the loss of life for people who died. I think that was the worst thing. Second bad thing was the storming or letting in the people into the uh, Congress. So those two things, besides short of that, I think everybody had the right to differ with the results of the elections or accept the elections either way without being violent. So I think violence marred the entire thing and there's the, for the violence, no one else other than the president himself uh, and his, his, his cohort of his, his, his friends, they were responsible. Now, I would say that this is 
a great uh, uh, lapse of security uh, in Washington, whose mayor is a Democrat. They failed to protect the uh, seat of government. Uh, that, that is horrible. Uh, that, that is uh, what you see is that people just two days back, uh, Trump yesterday, probably a day before that, he tweeted that can't you see thousands of people pouring into D.C.? It means people were coming into D.C. and everybody knew about it. And I mean, Trump was not the only one who was claiming so this. So primarily, sir, these so were not the people it. only from District of yeah. Columbia, Washington, D.C. Yeah, uh, they were, coming, they, they were from other states as well. So the question is, the question to answer is, who organized this, this protest? Who funded this protest and what were the aims? It was certainly not the call of president to call people and people turned up by one or two. People came in thousands from outside as well. So who funded this particular uprising or this particular what, what Mr. Biden termed the sedition? Uh, that needs to be seen. But otherwise, uh, I think uh, the world leaders and other people are overreacting to what happened in uh, Washington. Yes, it was new for Washington, D.C. But uh, was, was there ever any doubt that the republic, the state, will let the democracy fail? I, I think it was, there was never any doubt uh, because uh, what you see is the, uh, there's been a, a great debate in U.S. whether U.S. is a republic or a democracy or a, or a democratic repu uh, uh, repu republic. So I think republic is a form of government that is for the people that is has the uh, sovereignty of the people and here what you see is three pillars of the state executive legislative and judiciary and each one of those roles to defend the system itself they let the people come in they let trump di show dissent they let trump reject the results but they did not let trump to uh, overturn the results judiciary as well as the legislative it was only executive which failed to control the mobs entering D.C. and coming to Capitol Hill. So I think that that aspect of allowing people to pour in and then coming uh, attacking the Capitol Hill needs to be looked into. Otherwise, I think this was a dissent which turned into disorder and that was political right uh, of those people. Barring the deaths that happened, that is despicable and the attack, attack on the Capitol Hill. So I see it as a as a... Uh, uh, exploitation of the mob or, or, uh, who attacked the republic, uh, the, 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 the system of the government. So I was never in doubt that democracy and the republic system of government in America will prevail. And what you see is even the vice president, Mr. Pence, he participated in the final approval that was sought uh, this morning. So he was there. He, he is part of the system. He has been there, part of the system for last couple of decades. So the system will not fail. And this is the lesson for us to learn from. That whatever happens in the streets, that is the expression of people's anger. But that should not let the system collapse. The system was protected and that was never in doubt. Very well said. Now, Afridi Saab, a couple of points. One is that... Uh... 15-day emergency uh, declared in the U.S. Capitol. Um, obviously, that means till the 20th of uh, mm. January till the 46th President Joe Biden takes over. But how crucial would be these next two weeks mm. uh, as far as law and order is concerned or internal politics is concerned or the future of uh, Donald Trump is concerned? Because now uh, what we have witnessed is that, you know, uh, Mike Pence, the vice president, was practically acting as the president and he was taking decisions on his own, uh, maybe on the behalf of the U.S. president. That also shows that there is a difference of opinion within these two as well. No doubt that uh, according to some sources, of course, uh, uh, there's a vice president, uh, he was not uh, agreed with the Donald Trump and uh, of course, uh, uh, he could not condemn it, uh, uh, I mean, openly, but uh, he was, uh, uh, or he uh, could not take the action, but uh, he did it in a way just to uh, make the masses calm down. Second thing that uh, as far as the question uh, is concerned about the internal politics are how these uh, coming 15 days, uh, it will lead uh, towards uh, the situation 
or uh, when the Joe Biden he uh, takes the uh, you know takes over as the president of the United States so I think it will decide the future of <laughs> Donald Trump uh, so far what the policies of Donald Trump internally within the US or externally with the rest of the world uh, those are concerned I think uh, the future of Donald Trump is very much uh, you know, that is uh, horrible. There could be so many charges that could be framed against uh, Donald Trump. And uh, earlier people were thinking that he might, you know, make the vice president yes. uh, the president hmm. and get a lot of uh, pardons the way he did himself. I mean, Gerard Kushner's father was pardoned and so many other people who were involved in the previous election, uh, you know, in making him lose or win either way. I mean, uh, they were pardoned as well. So this pardoning issue is going to be pretty interesting, isn't it? Yes, of course, uh, there is no doubt. But interestingly, you know, he is a business tycoon. He is a good businessman, but he is not a good politician. In the one sense, he is, I mean, that uh, how he became the U.S. president. But uh, in the real sense, what we call a politician or a statesman or, uh, or a leader, he is not. He is a comic, you know. So there are three things very much necessary in this regard. Uh, as far as the rights are concerned or the coming 15 days, those are concerned. One, Donald Trump to see him as a leader. No, by no way he is a leader. He is a comic, what uh, we can say. Second thing that... What but look he, at the number of votes he got even in this election, the one he lost, highest ever for a losing candidate. I think this is also <laughs> one of the dilemmas of democracy, right? That have you assemble and have you gather the people. And main thing what he used, that is the use, uh, or rather misuse of social media. Even, even yesterday, what, uh, in what way he used, you know, the social media and how he gathered the support of the mob. Interestingly, according to sources, <coughs> uh, independent sources, uh, there were also participants uh, in these protesters, in these protests, uh, who are far right and who are extremists. And, mm -hmm. you know, they were wearing various kinds of costumes like that. The third factor, factor that is also important, that is the conflict. That conflict is not the solution, especially in politics, right? And it is now, it has entered into the American politics. So that will not be limited to, uh, you know, this election, but it will have far-reaching implications for the future politics of the United States of America, that this thing will continue. Yes, the same thing we have already observed and experienced in African or Latin American or maybe in Asian countries. But interestingly, that now it is happening in the United States and it will have far reaching implications for the future <coughs> of American politics as well. Then, then have, it is a big challenge for the Joe Biden as well because if you look into the history of Democrats in the United States, it is always focused on democracy, mm -hmm. focused on, uh, you know, the strengthening of institutions across the globe and also helping all those people who are in search of human rights and to have a good track of human rights record. So now it is a big challenge for the Joe Biden that have he will address uh, and redress the four years what Donald Trump passed as the American president. So he will not only focus on the internal politics, society, culture, economy of United States, but also he will redress the relationship of U.S. with other countries, and Pakistan is no exception. Pretty, pretty interesting. Pretty, now, uh, uh, Bariza, uh, talking about um, another very important aspect, and that is about the polarization in the U.S. society or the uh, division within the masses, for that matter. And on top, uh, you know, this corona issue, uh, and other than that, the economic problems the Americans are facing at the moment, uh, I think there is a lot that has happened recently. And the division within, within the American public, I mean, that tells you the story. I still remember, I'll give you an example, that uh, uh, there was this bus of the uh, Democratic uh, uh, candidate and uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, on a road primarily to advertise uh, and there was this group of uh, people who were supposedly the Republicans. They practically bullied those people. And when that footage was shown to Donald Trump, you know what he said? Well, they were escorting them. So now if this man has this kind of, uh, of an approach, you know, and uh, he's not ready to accept what the reality is telling everybody else, 
then I think there is a lot going on. Now, since you are someone who is related to socio-cultural aspect, tell us about this division within the American society, this polarization that is, you know, really uh, getting charged. Your, your take, ma'am. I'd like to say, first of all, that I think we shouldn't lose track of the fact that yesterday also um, the Democrats got two more Senate seats. And so they are going to have the majority in the Senate after a very, very long time, which means that Joe, Georgia. Joe Biden and in Georgia, yes, both of the seats were flipped, which was um, a, a really big um, moment, which was overshadowed by all of this because um, the Joe, Joe Biden's legislative agenda can now move forward and Mitch McConnell is now the minority um, speaker, uh, which I think is going to make things a little bit easier for instituting the kind of change that needs to start happening. Although, of course, it is still a lot of it is still establishment. Um, the divisions are like anywhere. Once people are you have to confront what the issues are. You have to deal with those issues. You have to, and and those issues have always existed. It's only that Donald Trump has allowed them to become um, acceptable to voice and and bring out. And then you have the the people who are good people on both sides, and you have the anti-fascists being the terrorists and the Proud Boys being his standby people. Um, so it's not that they were not around before, but one of the, the senators who was defeated in Georgia was a KKK supporter, for example, in, in like the, the broadest sense of the term. So these divisions aren't going to go anywhere, but hopefully if legislative agendas like, like healthcare, like education, like debt relief, if these can take place, I think the divisions will start to get a little bit better and bringing back diversity training, making sure that money goes to communities rather than to law enforcement. Um, I think all of these will make a difference. I don't know, I have one question that was just, you know, popping up in my mind, and that is about the last 50 days, two weeks, as they say. Now, Donald Trump, everybody was expecting could end up, you know, giving uh, some sort of an instruction you know, to, to, to attack uh, Iran maybe, perhaps, uh, you know, bomb them or something. Now, do you think that particular idea is no more a reality? For Faisal, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. I was muted. Yeah, you, uh, you, you, you were think, muted, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think there was, uh, uh, although there was talk in the uh, press and the, in the media that he would probably attack Iran, uh, who, he would create a scene where, but there was no doubt that even if he attacked Iran, the transfer of power would have taken place. So there was no, not never in doubt. Now, uh, it also tells about, as I was talking about, the system of governance I think uh, there's, a, there's a military establishment in uh, D.C. and there's a political establishment in D.C. And political establishment as well as the military establishment did not, never wanted to derail the system. So even if he had thought or even if he had aired his uh, uh, wish to create a scene, military, military chaos somewhere, probably Pentagon would have resisted it. And there were, uh, I, if I recall, there were... Uh, uh, statements by the military people that they are not subject to a particular person but to the constitution of the country. And I think that is a very strong statement coming just after the elections. So I think uh, uh, while there were, there were uh, uh, gossip about the possibility, uh, testing waters I would say, but uh, it was never in doubt that the system will prevail, the transfer of power will take place, there could be some disruptions, everybody even prior to the election People uh, uh, forecasted uh, that there would be disruptions, there could be violence, that, exactly that happened. But the scale is not that one should be worried. As far as Senate is concerned, I think by winning two seats, the Democrats become liable to the Republicans, 50 each. There were 48, 50, now there are 50 each. So the casting vote goes to the pre uh, Vice President Kamala uh, Harris, Harris yeah. uh, who is the uh, leader of the House. So she will be the casting vote, and that was also probably one of the scenarios 
that were being discussed. What if the Democrats win both the seats? Or what if they if they lose one, then the Republicans would have been 51 versus 49. Uh, so this is, I think, this is uh, a stage. This is a stage. Uh, this is a place where the uh, Democrats are not very comfortable because the 50-50 the votes in Senate could go either way unless uh, the Vice President costs her vote uh, to make a difference. Uh, as far as uh, the coming days, I don't think that military, uh, the military establishment and the political establishment. Uh, will allow any uh, uh, any adventurism by Mr. Trump. Uh, they have safeguarded their system. They have preserved their system. Uh, so they would probably continue to preserve till the time a changeover takes place. All right. Now, uh, another important point, sir, and that is about the kind of reaction which we have witnessed from the uh, Swiss, uh, Swedish uh, Prime Minister or uh, Mr. Macron, for that matter, from France, or Boris Johnson, the PM of U uh, UK, and even the President of the European Council, Charles Michael. What I'm saying is that um, this is the impression which Donald Trump uh, has left as a president. Pretty disturbing for many people because, you know, everybody thinks that the US president is the most powerful man mm. on earth. Mm. This man seems to be not into that kind of a category anymore. Though he is the president, but he doesn't seem to be someone who is the most <laughs> power powerful because so many decisions have been taken over by other uh, politicians as well. Now, last 15 days and the kind of impression he has left, don't you think that uh, that is also a dent on the history and credibility of the Democrats or, of, or rather Republicans? And so many Republicans, in fact, uh, gave so many statements against their own president. Internally yes, uh, and externally, both. Lindsey Graham, you know, Lindsay Republican, Graham, yeah, yeah. Uh, Republican uh, <coughs> senator. Uh, Who was very, very close also, to, uh, to <coughs> Donald Trump. Trump. Yes, yeah. uh, criticized uh, the policy, especially now the protests, what uh, the tr Trump has ignited. So no doubt uh, is uh, now uh, what uh, we see the polarization in American politics and society, I think that uh, never happened before. And... Uh, Trump, I think it has, uh, you know, damaged the American entire history because if we see uh, the last time when the White House or the Capitol Hill and the main buildings in Washington, those were, uh, you know, ablazed and burned by the British Army, that was in 1814. So in Over more than ago. 200 mm. years, nothing happened in this way. But now during the presidency and the last days of the, uh, you know, Trump, it happened. So what kind of example now Donald Trump has set for the rest of the world and even its close allies from Sweden, from uh, France, from UK, they have criticized because every time when there were crises in the world uh, regarding the politics, so everyone was watching and, you know, uh, it was uh, predicting um, a kind of guidance from the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Now the real symbol of democracy or human rights or you know the uh, world economy or capitalism now that has been the concept has been destroyed we don't have what that about kind of america first america first the protectionist policies already destroyed the i think that American. was a very very powerful slogan because everybody really appreciated that and whatever happened the number of votes uh, this man got i mean he was looking inwards and he really wanted that the american economy um, should get better more jobs should be created a lot of jobs should come back to us instead of outsourcing mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. work i think he wasn't doing wrong but the way he was doing it that was wrong Look, uh, uh, yes, it's, it's uh, of course very much I'm a trade war with the Chinese. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll not call it a trade war anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a proper uh, cold war now. Cold war between oh, the yes. two countries. Oh yes, and that really got to the optimum level during the last three, four years. America first slogan or to focus on American society, on its own people. Of course, there is no, uh, nothing is wrong there. Every president or every leader wants, and yes, it was the the tactic what uh, or the strategy of Donald Trump that how he get, gathered at supporters. But main thing and the main fault line what he did, the main wrongdoing, I think that was the relationship of the U.S. with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. How Barack Obama was responsible and how he made and he did efforts 
to strengthen the relationship of U.S. with the rest of the world, especially with the Muslim countries, with Asian countries. So that relationship that was very much and uh, it was damaged in a worst way by the Donald Trump. So the foreign policy of United States in the, in the last four years, what we see, uh, I think I think the damage what he has done that was n we can't see in the last 50 years of the United States. Yes, the U.S. presidents, those who were killed, the U.S. presidents, even they were impeached and there were some allegations, uh, you know, against He the was saved Bill, Bill Clinton, <laughs> from the but, impeachment. Yes. If this was the, uh, you know, number or the figures in the Senate at that time, he would have been home. I think, yeah, there, <laughs> there's also a miracle in American yeah. history and especially in the days of Donald Trump. So, uh, in a nutshell, we can say that the Donald Trump policies, uh, I think nobody can appreciate, and it has widened the gap and the cleavage between the United States and the rest of the world, and also it has uh, divided the American society, and he has made various parts of American uh, society and various groups, and now in coming generation in future, uh, we can see groups and, uh, you know, the l uh, lobbyists, lobbies, and also pressure groups, and the extreme, you know, extreme right, far right, those kind of concepts and parties, uh, I mean, groups in the uh, U.S. society. So the next four years would be pretty interesting. And let me take the same point uh, to the lady in, in, in Washington. Now, ma'am, uh, tell us about another very important factor. Now, uh, 20th of uh, January isn't that far. Uh, Joe Biden is going to be elected. I mean, he is elected as the 46th president. The ceremony is going to take place. And uh, I remember more than 2 million people witnessed uh, when Barack Obama became the 44th president. And I was surprised to see the number of people. I mean, wherever you could see, you could see heads and that's it. Now, ma'am, uh, looking at the date, that is the 20th of January. I mean, whatever happened yesterday, I mean, I'm not saying it could happen again, but you can't even rule out that it cannot. Uh, if there would be millions of uh, Democrats uh, present uh, on that particular day in the city, a lot of uh, Republicans would be there as well. And, for example, I mean, if they are marching or doing something to protest, I mean, everybody has a legitimate right to uh, protest against something which they feel is not correct. Uh, do you see something of that sort happening or you think the law enforcement agencies would beef up the security to a level that uh, these people would be taken care of? Marisa. Well, I think uh, it, it's absolutely possible. Now, on the one hand, Mayor Bowser, uh, the DC mayor, had requested um, National Guard presence and the president had overruled it because um, the District of Columbia is not a state, and therefore they don't have their own right to call in the National Guard. So Virginia and Maryland actually sent their National Guard into D.C. before Vice President Pence um, allowed for that to happen. Um, that was not the case during the Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, she did not want as much of a securitized um, situation as uh, the, the federal government did, and so she was overruled then as well. Um, if there is mis more securitization, um, unfortunately, it's going to be disproportionate once again, probably, uh, in the same way that it was in Charlottesville, um, where it is the uh, what looks like on 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 lines of color, and um, there there if there is violence, I, I don't see that the law enforcement agencies will take um, action the way that they did with Black Lives Matter. Um, hopefully there will not be. Hopefully there will be um, some um, curtailment of gathering. Um, but yeah, no idea what's going to happen. But interesting times ahead at the say. Uh, Avim Saab, uh, if I may ask you about the same, I mean, do you expect some sort of chaos on the 20th or you think everything is going to be uh, smooth and uh, if you could please uh, unmute uh, your uh... thank you for reminding Faisal <laughs> uh, well uh, the uh, president elect Biden's camp was anyway try, uh, was, was thinking of a subdued or a, a sc scaled, uh, scaled kind of a, a ceremony because of COVID now since uh, Mr. Biden 
has actually voiced his uh, uh, concerns about the way Mr. Uh, the President Trump handled the, the pandemic, and he always wore a, ma a mask uh, when, whenever he came out, and he has favored uh, uh, probably a lockdown either, even. So I think uh, his uh, uh, ceremony will be mostly uh, online with the, with the thin attendance. That could be managed by the security forces provided. I mean, there's no doubt that they, they can safeguard their uh, uh, presidential ceremony. I will never doubt that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a superpower. And how could they let a couple of thousand people uh, mar a historical occasion? So let's, uh, I mean, I, what I would say is there could be disruptions here and there. There could be some show, show of unrest here and there. But this party will go on, definitely, and that day and that night. Now, looking at the elections, let's look at this passionately. In every country, in every election, half the voters don't agree with the result because they had voted for somebody else. Now, this time, those half the voters, and remember, this time, Mr. Trump got more votes than what he got in 2016. So there were a greater number of people who favored his policies, who got benefited from his policy. Polarization, yes. Uh, I think the polarization existed subsurface, and Mr. Ba Mr. Trump brought it above the surface. And he, he made it known that there's a large segment of the society that feels deprived, threatened, or ignored. So that is the fact of the matter, that more than 47%, almost 47% of people voted for him. So let's not denigrate those people who voted for him uh, they must have agreed with his policies, his ideology. Otherwise, American people are quite sensible. They would have probably not voted for him at all. So what I say is the system has worked. The system will continue to work. And uh, uh, polarization, it always existed, Republican versus Democrat, North versus South. It, it, it has been a part of their life as it has been part of our life. Even in my country, uh, uh, I do not get disturbed what happens on the street. That's a show of anger, show of dissent, as long as it does not result into that deaths and loss of property. That is the way democracies work, and that is the way we should expect democracies to work. So uh, I think the ceremony will go on, the party will go on, there'll be dinners, all those things will happen that day, and uh, I actually wish the American people a very safe and happy next four years. All right, Avim Saab, thank you so much uh, for your participation in the show. Bariza, it was a pleasure having you. And uh, Afridi Saab, thank you so much for your uh, presence as well. And thank that's you. all we have uh, for this hour. I'll see you, inshallah. Again, till then, you take good care. Khuda Hafiz.